we're gonna open up. I don't know how many of y'all saw this movie, The Matrix, but there's this one scene when um, the character named Cypher, what's the sister's name that wrote this movie? Sophia Stewart. Sophia Stewart. Her sister wrote this movie. She had to sue the, the demonic white man for the rights to it because they stole it from her. <laughs> Sophia Stewart. That's why you hear a lot of a lot of biblical innuendos throughout the movie, like Zion, yes. things of that nature. Who has not seen the movie The Matrix? Okay, everybody's seen it. So y'all know the precedents. Uh, these certain brothers, certain men and women are awakened to the truth of who they are, the reality, the state that the world is in. Um, now we find safe Cypher sitting down with one of the agents. Let's watch it now. Do we have a deal, Mr. Reagan? You know, I know this steak doesn't exist. I know that when I put it in my mouth, the Matrix is telling my brain that it is juicy and delicious. After nine years, you know what I realize? Ignorance is bliss. Then we have a deal. I don't want to remember nothing. Nothing. You understand? I don't want to be rich. You know, someone important. Like an actor. Whatever you want, Mr. So now, you might ask yourself, self, what the hell does that scene have to do with us today? It has a lot to do with us today. A whole lot. Let's open up with, um, uh, Colossians chapter 4, verse 14. We come in this truth. It's rah, rah, rah. Hip hooray, hip hip hooray, and after a while, now you saw he said it's been nine years for him. You're going to meet brothers, you're going to meet sisters. After, within a year, they, they zealous for this truth. But then they start to let the cares of the world weigh them down. They start to reminisce about the life they used to live, and many of them want to be put back to sleep. <coughs> Just like we saw right there. Um, real quick, before we go to um, Colossians, give me um, Revelation 2, verse 4 and 5. Let's read that. Revelation 2, verse 4. Nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee, because thou hast left thy first love. So, Christ is dealing with the church, the congregation at Ephesus, the church of the Ephesians. He said, I have somewhat against you because you have left thy first love. Our first love is the Most High. This truth. The Ephesians started to drift away from it. Come on. Remember therefore from whence thou art fallen, and repent, and do the first work. So now, that's what he says. Remember therefore from whence thou art fallen, and repent. So he wanted the Ephesians, he, this letter was to the, those bishops and deacons of the congregation. He said, remember where, from whence you have fallen. Remember what caused you to fall in this truth. Let's pause there for a second. For some of us, it's we. You start to think about that. You start dabbling with it again. Some of you, it's the white woman. Hmm, that white woman. Miss Ann, I can't get over that smell she got. <laughs> Some of you, it might be porn. Some of you, it might be the job situation. Money. Some of you used to sell dope back in the world. You made big money, now you're making $7.25 minimum wage, and it's weighing on you. Years go by. Read that again. Remember therefore from whence thou art fallen and repent. So Christ was giving the Ephesians a chance to repent. Likewise he does so with all of us. We got to catch ourselves spiritually and remember what caused us to stumble in this truth and repent. 
I know where I made my mistake. I know where I messed up. Come on. And do the first works. Now the first works is that repentance and that joy you had in this truth. Do the first works. Come on. Or else I will come unto thee quickly and will remove thy candlestick out of his place except thou repent. What does that mean? And will remove thy candlestick out of his place, Azariah. <laughs> Christ you to death. Right, he's going to kill you. He's going to exterminate you. He can't use you no more. So that's that's the what we got to remember in this truth. Okay, from there, Let, there was a brother named Demas. Let's go to Colossians four fourteen. Let's get familiar with brother Demas for a moment. All right, everybody got it. Colossians chapter four verse fourteen. Colossians four verse fourteen. Luke, the beloved physician. And Demas greet you. So you had Luke who was a doctor and this brother named Demas who rode with Paul, taught with Paul from there. I just wanted y'all to see his name, Demas. From there go to Philemon, chapter 1, verse 24. Philemon. Philemon, verse 23. There salute the Epaphras, my fellow prisoner in Christ Jesus. Marcus, Aristarchus, Aristarchus Demas, Lucas, my fellow laborer. So notice, he mentions Demas again, who was a fellow laborer with Paul in his truth. Now, this is years going by. Now, let's go to 2 Timothy 4 and 10. Let's start at 5. Let's start at 5. I want y'all to watch this and pay close attention. 2 Timothy 4, verse 5. But watch thou in all things. Endure afflictions. Watch in all things, endure afflictions. Do the work of an evangelist. Teach the word, come on. Make full proof of thy ministry. So you brothers coming in here to be leaders, you have to make full proof of your ministry. The most I called everybody in here for a purpose. Come on. For I am now ready to be offered. What does that part mean, for I am not ready to be offered, Isaac? Um, I am now, um, he's talking about um, passing on. Right. Ready to die. He's ready to pass on, to die. Come on. But I am not Paul ready. was mad old at this time. Come on. But I am not ready to die. Oh, be offered. Be offered. Excuse me. But I am not ready to be offered. And the time of my departure is at hand. See that? That's the proof. The time of his departure is at hand. Right? I have fought a good fight. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. That's what all of us, men and women, want to be able to say. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Now what we saw, the, the dude Cypher, did he finish his course? No. No, he said, uh, it's been nine years. I want to go back to sleep. I don't want to remember nothing. And when I wake up, I want to be somebody famous, somebody important, like an actor. We don't. Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day. And not to me only, but unto all them also that love his appearance. That's what we all want. Watch this. Do thy diligence to come shortly unto me. For Demas hath forsaken me. Stop. For Demas hath forsaken me. Come on. Having loved this present world. Having loved this present world. Y'all see that? He loved Rome. He loved Rome. Now that didn't come right away. That spirit didn't come on him right away. It's like many of, I'll say y'all, because they ain't me. <laughs> Some of y'all, it takes time. You get tired of fighting day by day. You get tired, the commandments become grievous, having to be disciplined in the spirit day by day. So that's the way on you. And you look at people in the world, right. living carefree, doing whatever the hell they want. And we, right. Give me that in Psalm 70, 70 something. You know what I want? Read that again, verse 10. For Demas hath forsaken me, having loved this present world, and is departed unto Thessalonica. He went, he went to Thessalonica. He said, yo, I'm out of here. Shalom. And you notice the, 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 the rules brothers give. I'm going out there to teach. This one I always hear. Um, um, I, I'm going there to teach the word. Y'all heard some of y'all? Well, some of y'all, a lot of y'all young. But just hang around a bit. Go to Sirach in the Apocrypha, Ecclesiastes chapter 9, verse 11. All right. 
this is the book. everybody get it. This is the book of Ecclesiasticus, Sirach, in the Apocrypha, chapter 9, verse 11. Envy not the glory of a sinner. Y'all see that? Envy not the glory of a sinner. Don't be jealous. A lot of you young men, you see other people in your, some of y'all that's in school, you see the girls flocking to these brothers, and you want that. You envy that. They might be the most popular in school. You envy that. You want that. They got the latest sneakers, Jordans, that they waited five hours in the blizzard cold to get. Read that again. Envy not the glory of a sinner, for thou knowest not what shall be his end. You don't know his end, his or her end. God says don't envy them. Don't be jealous of them. You don't know how they shall end in life. Look at Michael Jackson. Who the thunk? He'd have ended like that. Look at Whitney. Who the thunk it? <laughs> oh my goodness, the life they live. I wish I was a this a rapper. Look at Tupac mm -hmm. and Biggie. Young All young men. Oh, I want to be like Biggie. I want to be like Tupac. Oh yeah, you sure you want to be like them? Your end might be just like their end. Read that again. Envy not the glory of a sinner, for thou knowest not what shall be his end. Come on. Delight not in the thing that is uh, that the ungodly have pleasure in. Delight not in the thing that the ungodly have pleasure in. Come on. But remember they shall not go unpunished unto their grave. So God says they shall not go unpunished. They're going to be punished. They shall be punished. You busy envying them, being jealous of them. What they got, the haves and the have nots. You got that one in the Psalms? I'm trying to find it. Give me 1 John 2, 15. 1 John 2, verse 15. Love not the world. See that? Love not the world. What we saw on, on the clip just now, he loved the world. What we read about Demas, he loved Rome. All the filth of Rome, he loved that. See, a lot of you think, oh, you don't, they, you don't know what I'm going through, brother. All the meat, the women walk around half naked. Uh, uh. You go on the internet, you see porn from sun up to... The same thing was in ancient Rome. The same thing was in Thessalonica. If I don't know how many of you ever saw the movie Caligula, the unrated version, but don't go look at it. It's wicked as hell. But anyway, they give you a glimpse into Rome, how they had orgies on the street. All kind of filth going on. There's no difference between then and now. Oh, now you can stay in secret in your home and just press a button. Enter. <laughs> so, the same lust and perversions back then is today. Come on. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. If any man love the Father, love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Come on. For all that is in the world, everything that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the flesh, okay? The lust of the flesh, all those sexual desires, come on. And the lust of the eyes. The lust of that, because that's where it all begins, the lust of the eyes. Some of you might not be a sex thing. It might be a money thing. It's the lust of the, but the eyes start coveting begins with your eyes. How do you covet? You covet with your eyes, the things you see, okay? That's how it all begins. Whether it's you covet somebody's shoes. Oh man, I wish I had those. Somebody's woman, or for them, somebody's man. Okay, somebody's position, someone's job. Read that part again. And the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. And the pride of life. All that goes with it. What is the pride of life? Money? Name some more. Pride of life. Fame. Fame. Power. Power. House. Car. All that is the pride of life. Okay, I, I give you an I give you a story. Up, some of y'all been by where I live. Down the block, there was a brother looked down there, him and his wife, kids. Everything hunky dory, nobody thinking nothing. Cops come down with that damn boom, knock open the door, rush in, lock the husband up up in the house. Been selling drugs all his life. That's how he got to what he had. And a lot of people was envious. Oh, look what he got. 
He got a Benz. He got a Rolls. Oh my goodness. You didn't know how he got all that. You thought it was through hard work. Yeah, hard work selling drugs. But it came out later on. That that's what was going down. Okay, did you finish that? Um, no. Verse 16. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, and the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. So none of that is of the Father. It's of the world. Go ahead. And the world passeth away. Just as Rome passed away, America shall pass away. Go ahead. And the lust thereof. And the lust that comes with this place. So you hold it on to the lust here. This is going, this is temporary. It's going to be bye-bye real soon. Go ahead. But he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. But he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. What you got, y'all, sir? <laughs> this is the book of Psalms, chapter 73, verse 3 to 5. Psalms 73, verse 3. Yes, that's it. That's it. For I was envious at the foolish. You hear what, what David said? I was envious at the foolish. This is Asaph saying this. It says a psalm of Asaph. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. I was envious at the foolish. You got to put yourself in his place. Because a lot of us sit down and watch TV. Some of y'all watch that foolishness of uh, Atlanta Housewives. Maybe some of them stupid Negro shows. Jersey Shore. <laughs> that ain't Negro, but yeah, Jersey Shore. <laughs> <laughs> the basketball the, wives. That ain't Negro either. Basketball, basketball wives. You telling me black women don't watch the Bachelor? <laughs> yeah, the black women watch the Bachelor. The white bachelor. man, the Jesus Savior. Oh, the look the at the man. Bachelor. <laughs> that dude's a, a, a fool. <laughs> Read that again. For I was envious at the foolish when I saw the prosperity of the wicked. The wicked, if you didn't know it, in this world, the wicked will prosper. Yes, you want to prosper in this world, you must become wicked. You can't be for the most high fully, and you can't be in the middle. That's yes, right. It's going to be a conflict of interest. I, this is a bad example, but I'll, I'll use somebody in a minute. I'm going to talk about Chris Tucker. Can we go to, Can you find a picture of Chris Tucker? In case nobody know who I'm talking about. Chris Tucker. There you go. There you go. Right there. Blow it up big. The second. Blow it up big. I want everybody to know who we talking about. Zoom in on that. Chris Tucker. Y'all heard about Chris Tucker what happened? Now he came out on Def Jam Comedy. Y'all remember him? Rush Hour. Yeah, Rush Hour. Rush Hour. Uh, Friday. Wait, 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 wait. What's that sign he used to say on Def Comedy Jam? He had a high pitched voice. What's that? No. What do you say? And you know this man, something like that. I can't remember. But dude, very it's funny, bro. Very it's funny. It's Friday it's was it on Friday? Yeah. What else he was on? Rush hour. Rush hour. Mm -hmm. Lot of things. Now all of a sudden, he decided, where's the prisoner? Oh no. Where's the prisoner? Come on, bring him out of the dungeon. Where's the prisoner? The Is he back there? The prisoner? I know y'all trying to run. <laughs> bring him up here. Hey, Bezzo, show me a photo of the prisoner. <laughs> I need, I, 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 I need y'all to see. <laughs> okay, zoom down. No, I want the, the action. I want the facsimile of the. Oh, right there. There you go. Chris Tucker gave his life. No, he did. To Caesar Borgia and became what is known as a born-again Christian. Mm -hmm. So, Hollywood told Chris Tucker, Chris, what's wrong with you becoming a Christian? Your career was on the rise. You can't do this. He said, no, nah, man. <laughs> All his roles was they started cutting, cutting down, cutting down. Roll after roll. He started losing. Chris Tucker bought a multi-million dollar mansion. Put the image back. Well, he put he put money on. He put money down on. How many of you heard what just recently happened to him? Y'all yeah, heard. heard what happened to Parham? Yeah, he's, he knows like 2.5 million in back taxes. Right, and he's bankrupt now. Damn! The brother's bankrupt because he wanted to live, he wanted the pride of life. 
Okay? Live that life like all his friends live. The ball players, the Jackie Chan. Jackie Chan got big money. He don't have those scruples of, I'm not going to curse no more, I'm not going to do this. He makes his own decisions. Chris Tucker was up and coming. You can't live like the Jackie Chans. Them balls, them ballers you hanging around with. He thought he could. My brother went bankrupt. Okay, that was it. Take the prisoner away. I'm sick of looking at him. <laughs> Bring him back to the dungeon. Let the guards take him back. <laughs> <laughs> so, read that again. So that's, he tried to walk in the middle. I don't want to do this, that pride of life, but I want to be a quote-unquote Christian and have some type of morals and scruples. Hollywood said, you can't mix the two. It's not going to work. So now, at the foolish, when I saw the prosperity of the wicked. Right, when you saw the prosperity of the wicked. Come on. For there are no bands in their death. Mm -hmm. But their strength is firm. So he said there was no problem with them when they die. But their strength is firm. Go ahead. They are not in trouble as other men. So he says, looking at them, they're not in trouble like we are. Okay. The government ain't after them. Right. They don't got the problems we got. They they rich. They got they good famous. credit. Huh? They got good credit. They got good credit. They don't got the same problems we got. Go ahead. They are neither are they plagued like other men. They ain't plagued like other men. Go ahead. You want more? Yeah. Therefore, pride compasses them about as a chain. Mm. Violence covers them as a garment. Mm. So that's behind the scenes. Violence covers them as a garment. Watch this. Jump over to verse 16. When I thought to know this. When I thought to know this. It was too painful for me. It was too because he saw the end of the wicked. Watch this. Until I went into the sanctuary of God. Then understood I their end. You see that? It wasn't until Asaph went into the sanctuary of God. Which is this Bible. He understood what the end would be. Okay? That's what this just told you over here. All right, read that. Right, back in Sirach, showing you saying the same thing. Uh, chapter 9, verse 11. Envy not the glory of a sinner, for thou knowest not what shall be his end. That's right. So these are things we got to keep in mind. We got to keep it in mind. Okay, from there. Let's go back to 2 Timothy 4 and 10. 2 Timothy 4 verse 10. For Demas had forsaken me. So Paul revealed that Demas, brother Demas, had forsaken him. Come on. Having loved this present world. Having loved Rome. He said Demas forsook me. Demas was rolling tight with Paul for years. That's why Christ said, He that endures to win, the end. That's, what, that's what's going to determine this outcome. It's not how long you've been in it, it's if you endure to the end. Read it again. For demons have forsaken me, having loved this present world, and is departed unto Thessalonica. And is departed unto Thessalonica. Crescens to Galatia. Crescens to Galatia. Titus unto Dalmatia. Now there's another brother, Titus. He went to Dalmatia. He was rolling tight. There's a book written up behind him. Yes, the book of Titus. He forsook this gospel. These are the things we got to think about. That's why there's a scripture that teaches us to consider the cost. Count the cost. Are you able to start this battle and finish it? We're going to hit all those scriptures today.